What is going on everybody, Zionic here, and in today's video, we're going to be checking out some awesome battles from a member of the community, Zare Felrose. So shout out to them, thank you for sharing these battles with us. Now, Zare Felrose is a patron member of the community and a very skilled battler, and the patron community that I have has been running this team this last first week of Go Battle League, and they've had a lot of success. We have Shadow Nitto Queen, Scrafty, and Umbreon. Nitto Queen got a huge upgrade, getting the move Poison Fang as a charge move, which has 100 percent chance to lower your opponent's defenses and poison jab getting a buff in terms of its damage output this thing is absolutely deadly and i know you guys know about it because a lot of content creators around the whole community have been making videos on shadow nano queen so this is the video we are going to make now i personally don't have one which is why i haven't run this team myself but this team is really strong. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think about this team and these battles. And let's go ahead and get right into the video. All right, let's go ahead and get right into this first battle here. Excited to see what Shadow Nitto Queen can do. We got Nitto Queen on the lead versus Gavantula. Pretty good matchup right here considering they're going to be doing neutral damage while Gavantula is only doing resisted. Poison jabs really shredding apart. And Poison Fang here as well, like we said earlier, does 100%, um, has 100% chance to lower your opponent's defense. And they do get a shield as well. Charge me now coming through, probably going to be lunge looking to lower the attack here of the Nitto Queen and it is going to be a lunge which is nice it doesn't do too much damage right there and we do see a swap now into Galarian Stun Fist so we will see Scrafty now come in Scrafty in the back handles these tanks like Galarian Stun Fist or Bastiodon extremely well you can just go straight power up punch really ramp up your attack right here and completely farm down without necessarily having to shield Earthquake won't one shot but they are going to put up the shield right here and it's going to be a rock slide shield bait which is unfortunate it for them but they can survive an earthquake if the opponent does get to it right here so another charge move coming through they're going to go ahead and let it go this could be the earthquake and it is but scrafty is going to be able to hold on hold on right there and completely farm down now we'll have to see what they have in the back it is going to be a Azumarill right here. So they're going to go ahead and go for Power Up Punch, boost that attack again, and we'll probably see a Foul Play now come out to do some resisted damage, but at least it's going to do a good chunk. No, they swap right away into the Nidoqueen. Queen. Shadow Nidoqueen Queen absolutely tears apart Azumarill's right here, getting the Poison Fang off as well. That does get the final shield there from the Azumarill, the defense drop, and look at this thing shredding apart Azumarill, everyone. They still have Umbreon as well in the back. Gavantula is also in the back for the opponent. That's a lot of damage right there. Absolutely destroying Azumarill. We see a swap now into Gavantula. Nidoqueen Queen cannot be stopped right now. Another Poison Fang coming through. This is going to be doing neutral damage. One shots right there. And Nidoqueen Queen just shredding apart that team once Galarian Stunfisk was gone. Okay. Moving into this next battle, we got Nidoqueen Queen on the lead versus Jellicent. Okay, interest is interested to see how this plays out. They're going to swap right away into Umbreon. Look to get ahead on energy, and we will see a superior come in. This is actually pretty nice here for Umbreon. They could potentially flip this matchup and align Scrafty to Jellicent, which is definitely a nice matchup. So they're going to go ahead and just keep going for foul plays right here. What's great about an Umbreon safe swap as well in this kind of situation is it's very tanky, which means it can soak these frenzy plants um, and spam these foul plays very quickly as well now if this superior does have leaf tornado that might help it out to lower the attack here but we'll have to see no shield as well which means umbreon if it lands one more is going to be able to flip this matchup and we do see another charge move coming through they're going to go ahead and let this go it can't ko right here it is going to be another frenzy plant but they will be able to get to a foul play in time we'll be curious to see if they, anyone decides to swap right here or give up a shield here comes the foul play no shield right there, able to completely flip the matchup, which means Jellicent is not going to be coming back in, and there's going to be an Excadrill in the back, which means Scrafty is going to absolutely destroy this back line right here, being able to do super effective damage to both Excadrill, and, and they get a shield right there, Excadrill and Jellicent. They can come in and farm down. They can easily shield right here. Drill Run's going to be doing quite a bit of neutral damage, and it is going to be that Drill Run right there, and we may see the Jellicent swap in. They can just go for foul play right away. Now, the only hope this Jellicent has is if it has Ice Beam to do neutral damage. They don't shield the foul play as well. We'll have to see if this is going to be an Ice Beam. They're going to go ahead and let it go. Ice Beam won't KO, but it is going to be a Bubble Beam. That is unfortunate. That's not going to do any damage right here. Scrafty is going to be able to get to another foul play in time. This is going to be taking out the Jellicent or getting the final shield, but Scrafty is primed to sweep this team right now. And they go ahead and let it go. Excadrill is going to be coming in, but counters will absolutely destroy it. And that is going to be a good battle. Very well played. All right, moving into this next battle. 
We have Nidoqueen Queen on the lead versus Azum. Oh man. Oh man, let's see this. Okay. Nidoqueen Queen just tearing apart a zoom roll right here. This kind of feels like Shadow Victory Bell, right? Those razor leaf damage. This is kind of how it feels. Poison Fang is well coming through, gets the shield, and the Azumarill is not swapping out, which means Nidoqueen Queen is gonna tear this Azumarill apart. They're gonna go ahead and shield as well. Ice Beam will be doing super effective damage because of that ground typing. But Nidoqueen, Queen, my goodness, look at this thing just tear it apart. Here comes another Poison Fang. This is gonna one-shot Azumarill, I think, or they will be getting the final shield. What could be in the back? Back. One shots the Azumarill. What is going to come in? It's going to be a Hypno. We will see a swap straight into Umbreon right here. And we do see a Shadow Victory Bell now come in. Again, this is what's great about Umbreon. Safe swaps and somewhat neutral matchups. It can apply so much pressure and has bulk. As you guys can see, foul play right there just does so much damage. And the Shadow Victory Bell is going to have to shield this charge move, which means Scrafty is going to be able to sweep this endgame right here. So here comes another foul play. It does get the shield there from the Shadow Victory Bell. And we will probably see an Acid Spray potentially right here. Maybe this is going to be Leaf Blade. It is going to be the Leaf Blade for neutral damage. They will be able to farm down with fast moves. Can you get to foul play? No, they can't. They can easily bring in the Nidoqueen Queen right here. Just fast move down and then throw the Poison Fang against the Shadow Hypno here. And then look to go into Scrafty, get to that foul play and close this game out very nicely. They still have a shield and Hypno has no energy as well. And this is going to be a good game. Very well played. Charge me now coming through. They're going to go ahead and shield. This is probably just going to be a Thunder Punch right here. Which, oh, Fire Punch. All right, same difference. Um, and then foul play will be taking it out and that is going to be a good game very well played So double dark still holding strong here in the great league and Nidoqueen queen tearing apart that Azumarill. All right So we see Alolan nine tails now on the lead is this charmer powder snow and they decide to swap out and We do see a polytoad now come in so Umbreon is going to be coming into this polytoad right here It's gonna be doing quite a bit of neutral damage again like we've said this whole video so far Umbreon being super tanky can win these mid-game matchups and put more shield pressure on the opponent than the opponent can put on them because of its bulk. So we will see a charge move now coming through. They're going to go ahead and shield though. Could potentially be a blizzard or earthquake. It is going to be the blizzard. That's a huge shield right there. That could have been weather balls. You guys know the safe swap polytoad can spam these weather balls, but that was a great shield to stop that blizzard. That is a lot of energy drained there on the polytoad. And Umbreon is going to be able to take this mid-game right here. Can easily farm down with Snarl and tank a few weather balls which we will likely see be flying a double blizzard actually and it's still not enough to take it out umbreon being extremely bulky right here they're gonna go ahead and throw the foul play just before they can get to a weather ball looking to force that shield from the opponent or take out the polytoad and they do take it out which means we'll probably see the only nine tails come back in but this is why umbreon with last resort which is a legacy move is what you want to have so you can do neutral damage to these fairies like this now we will see it is going to be a charm a lonely nine tails which means it's not going to have a lot of pressure against the uh, Nido Queen right here, but Poison Jabs, my goodness. Now we do see a swap into Stunfisk, which means this Poison Fang is going to drop that defense. Scrafty's going to come in and absolutely clean this game up. Scrafty's going to just straight up destroy, going straight for Power pun power Up Punch right away. No reason not to. This probably won't be getting, actually this might get the shield right here. No, they're going to let it go. And again, like we saw earlier, Earthquake cannot one-shot, so they don't need to shield. Their win con is with Nidoqueen right now, and that is going to be a good game. Very well played. Earthquake able to survive that with relative ease. We will hopefully see a foul play, maybe? No, just going straight for power-up punch, but Charm, man, being dark, fighting typing, you take four times damage, basically, from Charm, and they do get the final shield right there, which means the Nidoqueen Queen can come in and just fast move down, safely shield this Weather Ball right here, and that is going to be a good battle, very well played. If this Alolan Ninetales was Powder Snow, this would be a different story. Um, it'd be a very interesting matchup, but that is going to be a good game. All right, moving into this next one, we have... Nidoqueen Queen versus Hypno. All right, they got a bailout right away. Double Shadow on the lead. No, they're staying. Okay, they do decide to go into Umbreon, and we do see a swap into Azumarill right here. And this is what's great about Umbreon as well versus the Azumarill matchup. Last Resort does enough neutral damage where you can kind of soft lose this matchup and come in and hard farm 
with the Nidoqueen. Queen. So we will see these last resorts land and we'll likely see play roughs right here if they have it, which does do super effective damage because of that dark typing, but it will not be enough to one shot. So there's the first play rough. They will need two in order to take it out. We are going to see probably two more last resorts here from the Umbreon before they go down. We'll have to see if um, Zare Felrose decides to shield a play rough right here, looking to possibly flip the matchup, which is also a good situation, but they will get to another lot. No, not able to get to the next last resort, but this is a lot of health on Azumarill for Nidoqueen to be able to come and farm down. Um, so we'll probably see that come in. Yeah, absolutely come in. Farm, hard farm down right here. They're going to go, actually going to go ahead and throw the Poison Fang right away. They're going to undercharge it as well. This is so that it doesn't do as much damage and they can farm down with fast moves and have loaded energy. But Azumarill was still able to get to the Ice Beam, which means maybe they just shouldn't have thrown and just completely farmed down. But Ice Beam is going to be blocked right there and we will see the farm down. Now Hypno is going to be coming back in, which will do super effective damage. And they're going to go ahead and swap right away into Scrafty. And we do see an Umbreon, or, um, not an Umbreon, a Flying Umbreon come in. The Mandibuzz right here. But what's great about Scrafty is you can go straight power up punch. And because of that dark flying typing, counters really start to add up. They're not going to shield right here as well. We'll have to see if they have Aerial Ace, which they do. It does do super effective damage. And they're going to go ahead and just keep going for power up punch right here. This is going to constantly be building up the damage of counters. And we are going to see Scrafty start becoming a steamroll right here. Oh man, these counters are really starting to add up. Able to get to another one now. This is where shields start to fly this is where Sack Swaps could come in. Let's see how this plays out. No shield again from Mandibuzz. This Scrafty is just going to shred through. They will be giving up a shield right here on Scrafty. No, they're going to let it go. Aerial Ace, not enough to KO. They're going to go ahead and swap into the Nidoqueen. Queen. Get ahead on energy. We are going to see the Hypno now come in. So this is going to come down to the wire, everyone. Poison Fang now coming through. Is it going to get a shield from the Hypno? It does. That means they could potentially get to the Earth Power right here. Can they get to it in time? They're going to have to shield... They let it go. Is this a thun? It could be an ice punch. It's a fire punch. Oh my gosh. Ab Did they get it? No, they got the poison fang. Oh man, he had the earth power. So poison fang isn't going to be enough damage to take it out. No, they get a second shield. Can they get to the foul play? No. Oh, good game. Very well played. That was a close one. That was a close one. All right, moving to this next one. We got Nidoqueen versus Probopass on the lead. Interesting lead matchup right here. We haven't seen Probopass in a long time, and that's due to Galarian Stunfisk, right? But we will see a potential straight Earth Power right here. Charge Moon now coming through. Might be Magnet Bomb right here if they're throwing it this early. No, it's going to be a Rock Slide, which is resisted. They're going to go ahead and go for the Earth Power. We do see a swap into the Whiz Cash right there, which means Poison Fang is going to be resisted, but it's going to drop that defense, and we may see Umbreon. Umbreon now come in. Yeah, we will see that Umbreon come in. Look to soak some energy right here and just take down the Whizcash with foul plays, which is going to be a nice setup, which means they can bring in that Scrafty into that Probo Pass. But a Blizzard, as you guys see, Umbreon's so tanky. It, could, it just took a Blizzard. It can take two Blizzards right here, which means Whizcash is going to have to start throwing some uh, Mud Bombs right here for neutral damage. Will they get to another one? Oh, wow. They're just going to go ahead and go for another foul play. Here comes the charge move from Whizcash. Again, Blizzard won't one shot like we saw earlier. It's just going to be a mud bomb right there. And they're going to be able to get to another foul play. They have lots of loaded energy as well. So we'll have to see what that final Pokemon is. But they can align Scrafty to Probo Pass, which is definitely ideal. They decided to shield right there. And we do see a Metacham now come in. So this is definitely deadly. Metacham is going to be doing, um, if it has Ice Punch, a lot of damage to Nidoqueen. But we will see the Nidoqueen, which has a Poison Fang right away. Um, it's kind of laggy. All right, so we're going to see this Poison Fang right here. Does neutral damage right there, and they didn't shield as well. This is looking to be a good game. Again, Scrafty can close this game out with a shield. They do decide to shield the Psychic as well, which is great. And going to be able to farm down. Will we see an Earth Power Land versus Probo Pass, though? Whizcash is going to come in. They're going to go ahead and go for another Poison Fang. Look to force that shield if the Whizcash wants to get off another charge move. And they do. So they're going to go ahead and shield. Can they farm down? No. Are they going to? They're going to shield again. They want to earth power this Probo Pass right here, which will be taking super effective damage. So Nidoqueen is going to be able to farm down. Here comes the Probo Pass. Earth power right here. It might one shot. We might have a boom right here. Is it going to boom? Boom! One shots right there. And Nidoqueen putting in work this game. Taking down Metacham. Taking down Probo Pass. Taking down Wizcash. 
That is a good game. All right, moving to this next battle, we have Nidoqueen versus Venusaur on the lead. Interesting matchup. Both going to be doing quite a bit of damage, and we do see a swamp into Galarian Stunfist, so we will see an Umbreon come in. This is kind of a good read here because the Venusaur Galarian Stunfisk is a big tell that there is a Bastiodon potentially in the back, which means Scrafty can kind of sweep this game. Um, so we will see Umbreon probably go for no shields right here, look to chunk the health of Galarian Stunfisk, and might come in. Um, with the Scrafty and farm down. We'll have to see. But they're going to go ahead and go for these foul plays. Does neutral damage again because of that steel typing there on the Galarian Stunfisk. You don't want to be throwing last resorts. It is going to be resisted, which is why foul plays is the way to go. We do see another charge move coming through. Could be another earthquake, but this is now where rock slides can kind of come through. No, they're just going to go straight for the earthquake right here, which means Umbreon is within KO range of a rock slide. So we'll have to see who decides to give up the first shield. Is it going to be Galarian Stunfisk? Is it going to be the Umbreon? Here comes a charge move from Galarian Stunfisk. Is Umbreon going to give up a shield? Yep, they're going to go ahead and give it up. They're going to look to try to farm down with Snarl, at least load up on some more energy and go for another foul play. This is going to be taking out the Galarian Stunfisk or gets the shield. This is going to be close. It does get the shield. They're going to swap straight into Scrafty and fast move down. Venusaur is going to be coming in, which is a huge tell that there is a Bastiodon in the back. And they're going to be going for foul plays for neutral damage. No shield as well here on the Scrafty, which means this Frenzy Plant is going to do a lot of neutral damage. And Nidoqueen might actually have to close this game out here for this battler because it has Earth Power. So we'll have to see how this plays out. Venusaur is going to be able to farm down. That is unfortunate. Able to get to the power up punch in time though. This could pressure that shield here from Venusaur. If they weren't counting correctly, they may think this is a foul play. No, they are smart. They let it go. It is up to Nidoqueen now. We have a sack swap potential on Umbreon. Are they going to bring in the Umbreon just to try to catch that Frenzy Plant? No, they're going to bring in the Nidoqueen. They will have to shield right here. This is going to do a lot of damage. There's still a Galarian Stunfisk with no health. And there's potentially a Bastiodon in the back. And it is going to be Bastiodon in the back. Nidoqueen looking to sweep right here with Earth Power. They have to be careful that this Galarian Stunfist does not catch the Earth Power as well. So here comes that first one. That just does so much damage. Here comes a Poison Fang from Nidoqueen. And Nidoqueen showing why it's the queen of the Great League meta right here. Absolutely tearing through teams right now. We do see a swap into Umbreon. And the Nidoqueen now is going to... gonna. Ooh, Gonna be resisting Stone Edge and Flame. Well, Flamethrower is gonna do neutral. Still, they went for the Stone Edge. Oh man, that is a mistake, and that is going to be a good game. Very well played. I think if they went for Flamethrower there, that would have been a lot closer. All right, moving to this next battle, we have Nidoqueen Queen versus Sir Fetch. All right, this is gonna be interesting. Poison Jab versus Counter and Leaf Blade. Poison Fang as well. Gonna be doing a lot of neutral damage. They're probably gonna shield right here. Yeah, this Leaf Blade will do quite a bit. Oh, it's going to be Night Slash as well. So both neutral, which is fine, but Poison Fang right here. Man, this is going to put huge pressure here on this Sir Fetched. And if they do shield, Poison Jab is going to fast move it down anyways. Oh, the defense drop right there. Able to get to another one in time as well. This is going to be taking out the Sir Fetched or getting that final shield. We'll have to see what the opponent decides to do. They decide to double shield. Poison Jab is just tearing apart. Nidoqueen is looking to potentially fully sweep this team right here. Nidoqueen does block that Leaf Blade. He's going to be able to farm down what is in the back. It is going to be a Galarian Stunfisk. Here comes an Earth Power to an unshielded Galarian Stunfisk. This is going to do a lot of super effective damage. I don't think it one-shots, but we'll kind of boom anyways. Boom, I guess. Here comes Scrafty to fast move down. Azumarill is in the back, which means Nidoqueen is primed to sweep again. We still have Umbreon as well. So Scrafty is going to be going for power-up punches, looking to boost... Um, that attack right here and try to get off a foul play now if this Azumarill does have a play rough right here This might be just enough to KO because of that dark fighting typing and it is gonna be the play rough No, barely not enough which means Scrafty holds on and able to get to this foul play now because of that fairy typing This does do resisted damage, but it's gonna be enough to chunk right here and Nidoqueen Might be able to come in actually they might want to bring an Umbreon right here This Azumarill has loaded energy and Ice Beam will one shot same with play rough. I think it's gonna be enough health Oh, this is going to be close. Azumarill does get to the charge move. Whatever it is, Ice Beam, Play Rough, Hydro Pump will take out the Nidoqueen. It is going to be the Play Rough right there. And the Umbreon is going to have to close this game out. Galarian Stunfisk is low. 
Can they get to the last resort? There's a sack swap, so they have to go for this foul play right here. This does neutral. Again, that steel typing like we talked about earlier. And Umbreon as well can soak uh, one play rough like we've seen in previous matches. And last resort is definitely crucial here to finish this game out for neutral damage. Charge move coming through. It's going to be that play rough, but Azumarill does not have enough in order to win this matchup. Umbreon's going to be taking it right here, and that is going to be a good battle. Very well played. That was a fun one. All right, moving into this next battle here. Let's see how this one goes. We have Nidoqueen Queen on the lead versus Talonflame. All right, interesting matchup. Let's see how this plays out. Incinerate doing a lot of neutral damage. Same with Poison Jab and Poison Fang. And Nidoqueen Queen can just spam these right here. This is going to be shredding the defenses here of Talonflame, which is already a glassy Pokemon. They decide to shield. We do see a swap into Whiskash, which means Umbreon is now going to come in. We've seen this matchup earlier as well. This time, the Whiskash doesn't have a defense drop from that Poison Fang like we saw in a previous battle. And we also know that Umbreon can soak so much damage. Mud Bombs, Blizzard, whatever it is, Umbreon can tank it and then some. So it's going to be up to this Whiskash if they want to win this Switch advantage right now. And Umbreon will be setting the pace. We'll have to see what their final Pokemon could be. If they utilize Whiskash as a safe swap, there might be another Water um, or Water Ground in the back. Maybe a Politoed or maybe a Swampert potentially. We will have to see. Charge Moon now coming through. It is going to be another Mud Bomb just chipping away the health. Um, and we will see these foul plays come apart. Now it's going to be up to this Whiskash if they want to win. Like I said earlier, is it, are they going to shield? No. All right, Umbreon, hopefully you can get to another one in time. No, not able to, but Umbreon can survive this, which means we're going to see a no shield right here, and it's going to be up to that Whiskash if they want to give up two shields. So they're going to overload a bit on energy and go ahead and go for the foul play now that they have two. This is going to take out that Whiskash or get that final shield like we've said about four times in the last minute. <laughs> they do take out the Whiskash. Now we do see a Talonflame come in and this is why you always want to overload on energy. Having another charge move ready to go is perfect. Going to be putting huge pressure on this Talonflame which will incinerate down. Now Talonflame is loaded. We are going to see the Nidoqueen Queen come in and there is that Politoed like we were anticipating. If they utilize Whisk, if they have a Talonflame lead, in a Whizcash safe swap, there is something else in the back that can handle those tanks that is also weak to grass, which is very important. And we will see the Scrafty come in. Probably no shield right here. Oh, they are going to shield. All right, that's perfectly fine. Weather Ball does neutral damage. They can easily go for Power Up Punch, which is going to be boosting that attack, and they will be able to counter down um, and take out this Politoed. Politoed did decide to shield, though. So they are going to be able to fast move down. They can probably let this charge move go. Go for a foul play versus Talonflame. And that is going to be a good battle. Very well played. Played this one really well. Um, and Nidoqueen, yeah, just super strong. It just puts so much pressure. Poison Jabs and Poison Fang, if it's doing neutral damage, you are going to put a lot of pressure on your opponent. And they will be able to get to the foul play in time and take out this Talonflame. And that is going to be a good battle. Very well played. So let's go ahead and move into the next one. I don't know how many left we got. Oh, that was the last one. Oh, man. Good games right there. Really great games. Huge congrats to the patron community who's been running this team all week. They've done incredibly well. And Zahair Felros, thank you for sharing these battles with us. This team is incredibly strong. Shadow Nidoqueen, as you guys know, is strong in the meta. Everyone's been talking about it. A lot of people are running it. But this was just our take here with the double dark Scrafty and Umbreon in the back. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And like always, thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.